Okay, so next we're going to stop in our chromatography lab. I'm going to start with our gas chromatography oh. with Alan. Hi, Alan. Hey, Jill. Welcome to the GC lab. Thank Good to you. See you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about our um, the GC systems that we have in the lab? Yeah, sure. So Perkinomer sells a, a full line of uh, GC products. Uh, we have a couple of GC models. We have our standard model, which is a real workhorse and uh, competitively priced. And we have our high-end model as well, which uh, has uh, super fast cool down. So for busy labs. So and what's the lab model that's, you know, yep. so what's the, the fast model? The, the Claris 590 is the workhorse, and okay. the Claris 690 is the fast cooling uh, one that you want for production work. Okay. So we happen to have, uh, actually, its predecessor, the 680 right here. Uh, and so you can put a mass spec, though, on, uh, on these various models, right? And why would you need a mass spec? Okay, yeah. So gas chromatography uh, detection is the name of the game. Uh, we do the separation. We've got to separate out those components. And uh, the detector uh, serves as a means to uh, figure out how much of that compound is there. The mass spec adds a, an additional dimension to that detection by not only telling us how much of the compound is there, but giving us an idea, sometimes a definitive idea, as to the chemical identity of that okay. particular compound. So I understand that, you know, during the pandemic, there's a lot of focus on hand sanitizer, and you can use various instruments to test hand sanitizer. Yeah. When you use a GC, can you elaborate a little bit on what you'd use in the chromatography world for hand sanitizer and why sometimes you might need Yeah, a sure. GC? So one of the principal ingredients of hand sanitizer is ethanol, ethyl alcohol. Turns out that Virtually all ethyl alcohol in the United States is produced from fermentation, uh, and as such, it has to be further purified. So sometimes during the purification process of this ethyl alcohol, other components uh, get into there. Oh. So traditionally, we've always looked for benzene. Sometimes it's been used to break up the azeotrope that, uh, that uh, high purity alcohol uh, uh, needs to break that azeotrope. Uh, also some other artifacts of distillation, such as acetaldehyde, and methanol that may be present in the, uh, the alcohol so, as well. So chromatography, just a standard GC, or do you need a mass spec? No, not, a mass spec is not required for the USB alcohol testing. A flame ionization detector suffices quite nicely. Oh. So this, the standard testing for the, the alcohol for the hand sanitizers uh, does a couple of things. It makes sure that the alcohol is a sufficient purity, and it meets USB criteria. Because if it's not pure enough, it doesn't do its trick, right? Well, I mean, it's not a matter of purity. That's uh, uh, what you don't want those impure uh, compounds in there, in this stuff that you'll be putting on your skin and possibly absorbing. So benzene, ah, methanol, acetaldehyde, okay. bad news. You don't want that. Okay. Now, on a related note, the hand sanitizer has to be at 60% uh, or better for it to be uh, working properly. Right. So if you formulate a batch of hand sanitizer, you dump maybe a few gallons of ethanol in there and some other things and they bring it up to the final volume for their, uh, uh, for their production line. And if that ethanol uh, concentration dips below 60%, it's no good. They can't uh, really exactly, use it. Exactly, which is what yeah. I was saying. It won't be effective, right? Exactly. So you've got to test that as well. Yep. So we so test that. So I, I see, you know, knowing a little bit about chromatography, there's a various introduction type things that we do fairly well. You know, you have a standard auto sampler, you have di different things. Can you t just touch a little bit on headspace and what it's used for? Sure, sure. So we have the GC, we have the mass spec, but we've got to get the sample into those, uh, that instrument to start with. So the headspace, this is where Perkinomer uh, ha has a lot of strength. We have a, a wide variety of headspace and headspace related instruments. So what is headspace? Headspace is a technique where we put a sample into a glass vial like this, we put a cap on it, and then we bake it in the instrument for a few minutes in order to evolve the volatile compounds that may be present. So this has a lot of really interesting applications. It was originally designed originally for blood alcohol testing, something uh, drunk driving. Now it's very relevant during the holidays. We were talking about alcohol earlier for hand sanitizer. Yeah. Well, you drink that alcohol, you get drunk and get an accident. You want to check out the person's blood. And Headspace GC is the traditional and gold standard means and, of testing. And why that. do you use a Headspace? Because you don't necessarily sure. want that gunk going in there. So it's only analyzing what's coming out of the blood, right? Exactly. The volatile, the volatile components coming out of the blood. So we could inject blood into the GC once or twice. Uh, but uh, with the Headspace, we can inject the volatile components of the blood, leave the blood behind, check the volatile ethanol, and do that hundreds and hundreds of times and still have great results time after time after time. Perfect. We have some other GC app, uh, Headspace GC apps that are, are particularly relevant uh, as well. 
So one that I like to talk about quite a bit is um, uh, packaging. So packaging materials that... So a potato chip bag, when you're eating the potato chips, you want to make sure that that potato chip bag isn't off-gassing things into my potato sure. chips so that I don't eat it, right? Yeah. Uh, personal care products, anything that has plastic packaging that may come in contact with something that you'll be using. So yeah, for example, uh, the thin film packaging gets printed that ink has solvents in it and we want to make sure that ink is dissipated. So that I'm not eating that. Right. Or and putting it on my face for my customer. Exactly. And, and another, another one that I find particularly interesting is testing incoming materials from your suppliers. Right. So I, I, like, I like to tell a story of a beloved childhood toy that the manufacturer was having problems as it was being unwrapped for Christmas the offensive odor that was emanating from this toy was making children cry and parents were having huge problems with this kind of stuff and the, the toy was not being well received. And it turned out that the manufacturer turned to us and our Headspace technology to identify the offending compound uh, in, in that plastic toy. And we ultimately determined that there was a, a mercaptan, a sulfur containing compound, very odiferous, that was uh, causing this problem and the manufacturer was able to take that knowledge check their incoming materials, make sure their supply chain was solid, and then reducing the tiers of, uh, that, were being, uh, that were being generated uh, by this uh, odiferous toy. Wow, nice story. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alan. Okay, so now next we're gonna actually talk about our liquid chromatography, both the LC mass spec and the LC, and I'm here with Margaret, who's gonna share with us a little bit more, first off, about our um, our Q-Site uh, LC mass spec. So this is the Q-Site LCMS triple quad. So this instrument is used for low level detection of contaminants um, in liquid samples. For example, any contaminants that you may have in the environment from the production of clothing, such as fire retardants or dyes, um, when you have non-stick coating, you get things like PFAS or PFOS that accumulate in the environment. And so we use this instrument to detect those things. We can detect them in drinking water using EPA 537. We can detect them in, we have methods for groundwater and um, wastewater. So basically anything that accumulates in the environment that you would need to detect in your samples um, of that nature we can do by LCMS. So um, a lot of the uh, applications for like drinking water, that's very clean, right? Drinking water might have some things in it, but it's very clean. Yep. Where things like wastewater and groundwater and other types of water aren't as clean. Right. You know, isn't that something that the Q-Site's really good with um, analyzing? Can you go into that just a little bit? Absolutely, absolutely. So the unique thing about the Q-Site as opposed to other LCMS systems on the market is that it tolerates dirty matrix types very, very well. So the way that we introduce the sample into the system, we call it stay clean technology because you have to do very little sample prep to be able to get great data off this instrument. So, it's so basically, it saves you time, because otherwise, with a standard LC mass spec, you would have to do some sort of uh, sample prep to get it to a point where you could actually put it use a, uh, use a mass spec on it, correct? Absolutely, it can save you loads of time and money in consumables. If, you, if your method allows you to avoid things like catchers or solid phase extraction, okay. which you can certainly still do offline, but you may not need those things with this instrument. So PFOS and PFAS are some of those things in the environment testing that are being regulated now by a lot of states, correct? Absolutely. Huh. Thank you very much. What we're <laughs> going to do next is we're going to go across the hall and just touch on our regular LC system. Okay, so we just walked across the hall and now we're going to talk a little bit about our LC. So, uh, Margaret, can you just talk a little bit about uh, this particular model, which is our Flexar? Sure, so this is Flexar HPLC, uh, regular pressure HPLC, and this one has our PDA plus detector on it, so you can detect anything that shows up in the UV. So, you know, LCs are LCs, right? You know, they, ha they have different detectors and things, but I understand we've got some exciting news about a new LC we just introduced to the field yesterday, 
and we don't have it here in our Downers Grove Tech Center yet, but could you tell us a little bit about our new LC? Yeah, absolutely. We have a brand new LC coming out, uh, shipping as early as next month, and it's called the LC300. Um, it's a brand new design, comes in several different varieties, so you can get ultra high pressure at 18,000 PSI or standard HPLC up to 10,000 PSI. And we have a brand new range of detectors going to be available. Oh, so, so what detectors are added that maybe we didn't have previously? Uh, so we have the PDA already, but we're going to add refractive index. So you can then do analysis of things like sugars. Um, and then we are also adding a fluorescence detector, which can be a thousand times more sensitive than UV detection depending on if, you have, if you're analyzing something that shows up fluorescently. So in the applied market, um, LC can be used for a variety of things like chemicals, consumer products, cosmetics, um, you know, one of our, you know, the, the lip balms, things like that. That's used a lot in chromatography LC? Sure, absolutely. Wide variety of applications. Okay. Thank you very much, and we're really excited to get our new LC here shortly.